Today we are, said we are looking at the anticoagulants and the learning objectives for today is that at the end of this lesson I would want you to understand the mechanism of action of commonly used anticoagulants, identify the key components of anticoagulants and preservatives used in blood banking, as well as recognize the potential side effects and risks associated with anticoagulants. We have been looking at blood banking and it involves the collection, processing and storage of blood and therefore for us to be able to maintain the viability and functionality of the blood products, then we have to utilize anticoagulants and preservatives during the collection and storage process so that by the time it gets to transfusion, then it is as if it has just been collected. Okay, So anticoagulants will usually prevent the blood from clotting and preservatives will help maintain the quality and integrity of the blood components. So we are going to look at the majorly used anticoagulants and one of them is the anticoagulant citrate dextrose, what we call STD. And STD contains trisodium citrate, contains citric acid and dextrose as its key components. It is one of the most commonly used uh, anticoagulants for whole blood and red blood cell preservation, which are usually a majority of what we transfuse on our patients. And if you are to collect blood uh, that has been collected on SCD, the vacutina tops usually are yellow in color. I know that you are very familiar with color coding for the vacutina tops, which is differentiated by what preservative or anticoagulant you have used for the blood that you have collected. Now, what is the mode of action for this anticoagulant called ACD? It has what we call a citrate ion that forms complexes with calcium ions present in the blood. And this prevents the involvement of calcium ions in the coagulation cascade. Uh, by reducing the availability of the calcium within now the blood that you have collected for transfusion, the conversion of prothrombin to thrombin is inhibited, leading to impaired clot formation, and therefore your blood does not clot. Kind of a calcium ion chelation. Okay. So now the ACD anticoagulant is a very good one because it is reversible, such that once we have put uh, done transfusion for the blood or the red blood cell concentrate on our patient, the body is able to metabolize the citrate ion, which we are seeing usually complexes with calcium ions, so that it can now be excreted and your blood is safe and the patient is also safe. So this SCD anticoagulation is reversible because the citrate ion can be metabolized in the liver and consequently excreted um, as biocarbonate in the kidneys. Now, I have already mentioned the few components that we have. So this slide just helps us to understand what is the role of the different components that we are having in our anticoagulant. And one of them is what we have already said, the citrate ions. So we have trisodium citrate and it acts as a chelating agent that binds to calcium ions and therefore now preventing calcium ions from participating in the coagulation cascade and therefore our blood or blood component does not clot. Then we also have uh, the citric acid and this one is used as a buffer in this anticoagulant that helps maintain the pH of the blood that has been preserved so that we do not have either acidosis or alkalosis. And then we have dextrose. Dextrose is a sugar and it serves as a nutrient for the preserved red blood cells during storage so that they do not get malnutrition in the process. Then we have 
Now, as much as we need anticoagulants, there is what we call side effects that could result in the patients as we do transfusion. So the side effects of ACD is one of them what we call citrate toxicity. And this one only occurs if you infuse very quickly or what we call rapid infusion. So uh, remember we said citrate ions are metabolized in the liver and they can be excreted as well, carbonate through the kidneys. But if you do transfusion very fast, then you're likely to get what you call citrate toxicity because the process of now reconverting this citrate and metabolizing it in the liver will not happen as fast also. So it is important to balance so that when you're doing transfusion, you do uh, small volumes slowly by slowly to avoid us having so much accumulation of so, uh, citrate within the blood. Now this citrate toxicity may cause what you call hypocalcemia because at the end of the day now it will go and bind to calcium ions, therefore depriving of now this patient of the calcium that is important in the blood and this leads to certain symptoms such as tingling sensations, muscle twitching and cardiac arrhythmia. So therefore, the solution to this side effect that you get with STD is ensuring there is careful monitoring, keep checking how much is the calcium ions within the blood of the patient who is being transfused and also ensure during infusion it is done at a slow rate that will help prevent and manage citrate toxicity. So that is STD. We have now another anticoagulant that is used commonly also in blood banking. And this is now what we call CPD or citrate phosphate dextrose. And even from this word, you can tell that they are sharing a component that is citrate. So this is commonly used and it contains trisodium citrate, also contains sodium phosphate and contains dextrose. So CPD is primarily also used for both blood and red blood cells. And for Bacutena tops, this one will usually have a light blue color. Now the mode of action for CPD is very similar to ACD because the trisodium citrate usually will chelate calcium ions like we did before. Therefore, interfere with the coagulation cascade and eventually inhibit clotting. So this uh, CPD, the additional is what we are calling sodium phosphate and this one helps us in maintaining of the blood pH, preventing acidosis. And we have more, <clears throat> we also remember we had dextrose in ACD. So this one we have said uh, contains sodium citrate for chelating calcium ions, has sodium phosphate for maintaining pH, and of course dextrose provides energy and nutrition for preservation of the red blood cell. Now this one also has side effects, and because of the fact that they are also doing chelation of calcium ions, we also are likely to have citrate toxicity when we are using ACD, okay? Now, in this case, of course, we still will get hypocalcemia that can lead to the symptoms that we looked on earlier. And therefore, the management of, of this is the same. Ensure that during infusion, infusion at transfusion point, it is done at a rate that is not going to cause citrate toxicity. Of course, keep managing what is the level of calcium to ensure that we are not getting hypocalcemia. Now, the other commonly used anticoagulant is what we call citrate phosphate dextrose adenine, CPDA. Now, for this one, the addition on CPD is the addition of adenine, okay? This adenine moiety here. So this one is an anticoagulant as well as a, as a preservative solution that is also commonly used for whole blood and red blood cells. And in addition to what the rest had, which had trisodium citrate, they had sodium phosphate, 
there was dextrose, now we have the addition of the adenine moiety, giving it CPDA. Okay, now for the percutaneous tops for this blood, is uh, they usually have a red color. Now, the what is the mode of action for CPDA? Again, it is very similar to uh, the ones we have already covered because they are also using uh, what we call uh, tristodium citrate. So the tristodium citrate is going to chelate the, the calcium ions, again, preventing or inhibiting clotting. And now the addition of adenine, because these other ones, they still play the same role as we had before uh, for trisodium citrate to be chelating calcium ions, sodium phosphate will be maintaining the pH, dextrose will serve as an energy source. Now for the adenine that is now new in this CPDA, it will promote the production of ATP in the red blood cells, therefore supporting their availability during storage. So this is a better improvement as compared to the CPD that we had earlier on. Now the side effects again, still the same because they are using the same mechanism of chelating calcium ions using citrate. Therefore, we can get what we call citrate toxicity, manage the same way, ensure infusion is done slowly, and also ensure that uh, you are monitoring as you do the transfusion to ensure that calcium is not at a level that is not supposed to be. It should be maintained within the range. Now, we do have what we call heparin as an anticoagulant. And um, heparin, I'm sure you have come across it in other blood collections for other different samples that you collect within the laboratory and heparin is also used frequently especially for the preservation of platelets okay and it is derived from porcine intestinal mucosa that is the big intestinal mucosa or you can also have it produced synthetically for the vacutainer these i'm sure you know that usually they are green in color now, heparin uh, usually acts by activating or enhancing the activity of antithrombin 3. Okay. So, heparin will activate or potentiate or enhance the activity of antithrombin 3, which is an endogenous protein that inhibits various clotting factors, mainly, it will inhibit thrombin uh, factor 2a and also factor 10a. So once this antithrombin inhibits the action of these two, of course we have already interfered with the coagulation pathway and therefore the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin is prevented and therefore clotting is inhibited. So this one, heparin activates antithrombin which stops or inhibits the action of factor 2a and factor 10a and therefore preventing conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin inhibiting clot formation. Now for heparin, the role of the components within heparin, heparin itself is the active component of this anticoagulant and we have already discussed its mode of action of uh, enhancing the action of antithrombin 3. Now, we have um, the side effects of heparin. Mainly, it is usually well tolerated by most patients. Uh, the only problem that has been found with it is that it can lead to bleeding complications, okay? So that now you have infused or transfused blood, but then the patient gets uh, bleeding complications such as hemorrhage, okay? And there are people who have also been known to have sensitivity to heparin or a history of 
uh, what we call heparin induced ribosome and this therefore needs to be very cautious when you're using heparin as an anticoagulant because you do not want to have uh, either people having allergic reactions or developing a bleeding complications.